Welcome to Crushing the Culture with E and T. I'm E. And I'm T. All right, and we are Crushing the Culture. What does that mean, man? What exactly what does that mean? Yeah, being that this is our first episode, I guess we got to break it down. Yes, we do. We need to break it down. This is episode one. So, Crushing the Culture to me, and mm-hmm. the way we talk about it is when we started this show, we want this show to engage with the people that have a say in what goes on culturally advised right now in this whole just era of the craziness that we're getting into. Yeah. We, we want to talk about the hot topics, the things that people want to hear and know. That's right. So we want to touch each and every um, element of uh, pop culture. Yes. So we talk about movies, music, uh, sports news, Facebook, Twitter. Yes. All of that. So we're going to give you our opinion and how we feel um, about what's going on. Yeah, just daily news. And stuff That's like it, that. daily news. There we go. We're going to have special guests come on. We already got some people lined up in the industry. And um, since this is uh, episode one, yeah. we need to tell them about us. All right. And how we met and all that. This is a pretty interesting story. Okay. Um, Once upon a time, <laughs> back <laughs> then. Story time. <laughs> it's been about how long now? We've been kicking it for over two years now. Yeah, right? man. Two, it's crazy how time flies. Actually, I believe this month we did our first show together, didn't we? Wow. We, improv. Improv. Down in Manassas at Gerani. Shout out to Gerani. Yep. And uh, Ken and uh, big Deidre. things out there. Yeah. They gave us our break. You know, we bought, we met through improv. And yep. after that, we were like, hey, we got, we got a little talent between the both of us. We both were writers. Right. We both were doing different things. Right. Um, and it just kicked off from there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I remember uh, yesterday uh, we were at a movie shoot and uh, we were right down there when you and I first had our conversation of in depth about the movie yeah. industry. Yeah. You were at that time, um, we're going to uh, flying out to L.A. To pitch your uh, yeah to Lionsgate yeah you know, man our first movie how was that how did that feel to go in there to be in front of the execs they hit me with their Rosa Parks nah <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all good <laughs> you know you know you're all happy you get I was blessed with having the chance you know shout out to VME Veterans and Media Entertainment uh-huh. for giving me the opportunity made it to be a finalist and went out there you know there's a lot of butterflies when you're out there pitching the big people for your yeah. project. Yeah. yeah. But it was cool. You know, my little story to it is, you know, I was, you know, had my suit jacket on, you know, you're all ready and everything's tense. Mm-hmm. And then the CEO comes in with a <laughs> t-shirt, jeans, flip-flops and like, hey, pitch it. And you're like, what? what? <laughs> Did you have a sweat uh, stains on oh, yeah, 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 you left? it off. It was, it was like, <laughs> it was like a mad, crazy five, ten minutes that you pitch and you got to get your point across, you know. It's, yeah. But, you know, it's a good learning experience. I tell everybody, get out there and pitch your stuff and get it out there. Oh, man, you, know? you have to. You have to. You have to um, pursue the dream because it remains a dream until you pursue it. Then it becomes a reality. Um, so, and you know what? You can get your yeses. You're going to get your no's, you know, but you got to keep on pushing. All right, cool. But tell the people where you're from. Tell them about yourself. You know? All right, so, listen, I grew up in a DMV. Um, I've been in uh, plays and theater was like my first love, and um, and then I started to, you know, write other things. And so I've been writing uh, seriously since I was about eighteen years old. All right. Yeah. Let me tell you what really inspired me. Um, I was working at a preschool, right? Um, okay. And um, there was a girl that was working there and she was reading a book and she was like all engulfed in the book and everything and I'm like what are you reading? She was like oh, I'm going to let you read this when I'm done it's so good. And I was like alright so she handed me the book when she was finished like two days later okay. and it was um, uh, a Donald Goins book called Black Girl Lost so I want you to think of Precious alright so the movie right. Precious. I'm in that mindset okay yeah. so it's about a, a girl who um who was abused, um, and then she gets involved with a drug dealer, and he kind of abuses her, and then she goes through all this horrific things, and and I couldn't put the book down, and that right there inspired me to start writing. Really? Yeah, it was reading a book, and I was never a reader, like I was a math guy in high school. Okay. And then next thing you know, I mean, again, I was doing plays, so I've always loved plays, but it was just an acting thing. 
but then um, I read the details and, and I was like visualizing this. And then I, I, I finished reading that. I started reading his next book, Kenyatta Escape. And then um, um, White Man's uh, Pride and Justice or something like that. It was something. It, he wrote these books back in the 70s. He was a heroin addict dad and all that stuff. It's kind of sad when you hear his story. But I, I, I envision taking his book and turning it into a movie. All right. So that's kind of how I got started. So, and then, you know, I've always been a comedian doing, that's how we met doing the improv thing. Yeah. And um, I wrote, like I said, several stage plays. And, and then I got approached about doing my own TV show. Okay. And um, so, you know, I started writing some sketch comedies. We shot the pilot and we got all these things going on. And, you know, like in Hollywood, you get a lot of yeses, um, but you also get no's. Or you get like a hold up, like, Arr. They really like hated it, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So you know, I just took that and put it on Facebook, and you know, I get some likes and laughs or whatever. But I just love to entertain. I love to write, and I got a whole bunch of stuff that I need to produce. No oh, man, but I love your stuff, man. I mean, when you first sent it over, like, hey, check appreciate this out. it. I was like, yo, this, this kid got talent. <laughs> this boy's off it. I mean, your yeah. stuff is entertaining. And I mean, that's why we, I guess that's why we're working together now. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. And we about to do some great things. Starting off with this podcast. Like yeah. I said, we are already starting to shoot a movie together that you uh, appreciate your push, man. I've dealt with a, dealt with a lot of uh, different cats in the industries, again, who always have hopes and dreams and promises. But, you know, I appreciate you coming through. And us working together, man. So I'm excited about this. Cool, cool. I hope I don't scare you off because, you know, some of those places we make these movies kind of shady. You know, like, <laughs> hey. Had me on a little dingy, dirty bathroom <laughs> floor yesterday, man. But it's all good. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Took one for the team. The homeless guys over there passing out. Oh, man. Like, I was just, like, yo, we should work put around them. it. Work around it. <laughs> find your character. Find yourself now. Come on. Just find it. Hey, listen. I'm up here trying to focus on the character, but I'm thinking about all the grimy stuff that's gone on <laughs> in this bathroom, but it's all tidy seat and everything. On the oh, floor. man. Yeah, uh, see, look, I need to go wash my hands. But again. it was a good experience. It was, I mean, working yeah. with Donnell, he's you know, good. And Shout good. out to Donnell Robinson. Yeah. Yep. And to sip and eat a movie is coming soon. Yeah. The trailer's yep. going to release, uh, what do you say, March? Yeah, March 5th, his birthday. His birthday, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that, you know. Good yes, sir. Good work. Yes, sir. All right, so that's a little bit about us. I'm sure as we um, go into more and more podcasts, you'll probably hear more about us because we got a lot going on. Mm-hmm. Um, but in moving on with the show, we got this thing right here. There you go. And this is for the mad three minutes. This is three minutes of saying. And so uh, we either going to start the show or end the show or somewhere in between the show uh, with the mad three minutes where we can hit on some hot topics, what's going on. Yeah. So I guess without There's further ado. There's a lot going on. It is. Yeah. I mean, every day is some type of news. So let's uh, flip this over. All right. And then we'll start. Get it. All right. So we had the uh, Wilder Fury uh, fight last night. Yeah. Now, I didn't spend um, $175,000 on a fight. Because <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like it's all expensive now. Yeah, man. I mean, it's pretty yeah, It's pretty hot right now, you know. But uh, I didn't catch the fight, but mm-hmm. I caught all the memes this morning. Yes, sir. <laughs> Dude. Dude, the, my favorite one is the Martin meme. The Martin flashback. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, but Dante is a beast. I ain't taking nothing away from him. I know right. he had that drama with Mike Tyson. Yeah, so he could be Mike. The 1986 flashback. Right. You know, but, you know, he's a he's a brawler. I mean, he's uh-huh. a fighter. He No one said he had to be all technical, and we found out what happened when you're not technical. And right. You get out in there. But, you know, shout out to Dante. I know he's going to come back. Mm-hmm. He's a friend of my, my partner. Um boy Melson, so mm-hmm. shout out to him. Hope he gets back up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, you know, I mean, he got his butt handed to him, and again, he is now the hottest meme on the internet. Yeah, everybody goes through that. Though, <laughs> Just don't be the meme. Nope. <laughs> oh, man. The internet is undefeated. Yeah. All right, so we got the NAACP Awards went on last night. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, we had some very interesting Winner's 50 Cent won. 50, yeah, 50, 50 was a hot year for 50, man. man. power. Power came back. I'm going to tell you about power. Okay. 
anyway. The first season, I was like kind of skeptical because uh-huh. I was like, okay, this is something. I'm waiting for it. And then, like, when the second season came, yeah. I was hooked. You yeah. know, yeah. you could tell the writing was right. The yeah. writer was like, look, we need to put it in. And it came a long way. And I was like, wow. And yeah. Like, yeah. 50's yeah. doing it. Yeah, shout out to Courtney Kim too. She's a um, a good writer, yeah. and she has a good team around her as well. Um, so also um, Chad Wick, uh, not Chad. Omari Hart. Omar. Yeah, Omari. Yeah. Mister Dream Eyes. Yeah. Look into my eyes. <laughs> yeah, he he's won. like the new Prince right now. Right. Don't look yeah, at him. Yeah. Don't look in his eyes. All the ladies drooling over him. He won. Uh, we had Beyonce win for Homecoming. Yep, that's my girl. You know Beyonce. Yes, sir. And what about Lizzo? Lizzo won Entertainer of the Year. I, I, I wouldn't have gave it to her. I mean, mm-hmm. she's not taking like say, not taking away from her. But Regina King, come on, come on now. Oh man, Regina King was killing it. She yeah. had the um, Watchmen, Watchmen, the Seven Seconds, yeah. on Netflix, and just all around. And I'm hoping that Boondocks come back. And yeah, she, I heard they pushing for that. Yeah, so I'm looking pushing. forward to that as well. I'm, so I'm biased. I could never be a judge because I'm biased. And, <laughs> you know, I've loved Regina from afar since I was a wee lad. Oh, man. So. She's, she's, a, she's a phenomenal actress. Yes, she well, is. that's uh, it for the first three minutes of um, our sh- official show after we talked about ourselves for like five, ten minutes. All right. Um, but uh, moving on. So we're going to be tackling hit some show. of our hit shows. Yes. What are we watching now? Well, um, I think the both of us are watching The Outsiders. Oh, yeah. The Outsider. That's HBO's Outsider. Um, uh, Stephen King. Yeah. You got to love Stephen King. He's been quite boisterous lately, especially what? in the political realm. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he's been killing it. I mean. You know, I saw an interview with uh, Stephen King, um, and he was talking about him writing. And as a writer, I was watching um, to see, like, how do you complete so much because the brother's catalog is amazing yeah and he just sits down and write that's what he says i just sit down and i write well see with me i need to have like some red bull (laughs) and like some no dose right do some push-ups on the side because you know like we talked about earlier squirrel right (laughs) amazon got a sale on right right now Oh. You're thinking like, oh my goodness, um, hey, what I'm about to eat. Um, <laughs> Where we going to eat at? <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> Listen, man, I tell you, sometimes I can sit down and I can get in the zone and I can knock out something yeah. in no time. Yeah. But then there's sometimes that you sit down and you struggle. Mm-hmm. And you struggle and you're staring at the screen and you're like, okay, um, let me start on something else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me do my finances real quick. You're right. Tax season coming around right now. And, you know, I need to make sure they on their grind. Yeah. I got right. you. So, yeah. But, you know, outsiders are out the normal. It's like a drama. Yeah. Slash. I for- man when I was type. watching it, I forgot that it was a Stephen King uh, movie yeah. or show or whatever. You know, it's based off of Stephen King. Mm-hmm. And then as it got weird, I was like, there it is. Yeah. yeah there yeah. it is. Right there. And Cynthia Evo, yeah, yes. she 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 plays a pretty good role, you know. Yeah, she, yeah. you know, that little Rain Manish thing she yeah, got going I on. Yeah, I like that. She like she had lower ticks and stuff, you know. She's like an alcoholic or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know got the cop that just don't. I would be that cop that wouldn't believe it till you see it. But yeah. you know, he's seen it all the time now. But he's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, right, not happening. <laughs> Mm-mm. No, and <laughs> this ain't real. This ain't real. This real. Okay, boogeyman right behind your back. He ain't real. Right, right. Yeah, I like the way it's done. Um, without spoiling it um, for our listeners, it is a um, a crime thriller. Yeah. Um, that has the boogeyman in it. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> boogeyman tearing people up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Just it's an interesting it. concept of that. You know. Um, uh, if I say that, I might spoil it. Yeah, we ain't so, gonna spoil it for him. Yeah, but I, I give it um, so far. I'm enjoying it. Um, mm-hmm. I am not caught up. I think I'm one episode behind. Okay. And um, which shows tonight? So yep, that yep. episode tonight. Yeah, oh, so I'm gonna watch two. Yeah, so I'm gonna have to watch two tonight. Okay, cool. cool, cool. One tonight. That one last tomorrow. episode was hot. Though. I'm gonna let you know. I don't okay. Want to ruin it for you, brother. I'm gonna ruin it for you. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. I gotta so, watch that. Friday, I checked in and I started watching Amazon Hunters. Okay. All right, it's it's a different concept too. Right. Um, 
you know, it starts out with the Nazi hunters. The Nazis after the war uh -huh. migrated over here to the United States, hid out for 30 years, and now they starting all kind of mess, muscula all over the place. And the group of a uh, group of people, like an odd band of people, are out there hunting them. Mm. And it's, it's, you know, they're getting revenge back on the people that tortured them out there. So, like I said, I thought about it. So, what if slaves mm. said, hey, we're free now. Let's go back after the slave masters that whipped up all the time. What? Yes. Oh, that'll be hot. <laughs> All right, we writing that, writing that, yeah, writing that down right now. We Remember Ezekiel whipped us that one time. Yeah. Let's go get Ezekiel. We gonna find Ezekiel left. Oh, he moved to Miami. What? We getting massive. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. But it's a really good show. You know, mm -hmm. it goes back and forth, and you know, Peel, um, Jordan Peel, Jordan Peel actually was involved with it. So I'm, I'm being interested. It's, it's cool, a real cool. good concept. I'm looking for his next movie because I enjoy both um, us and. Um, Get out. Get out. Yeah, get yeah. out was fun. Uh, what's his name? The lead actor, um, Danny Boy, said he wouldn't mind doing a part two to get out. Oh, really? Yeah, but I guess Jordan doesn't have any, doesn't want to even touch it. Yeah, because it's one of those things that this concept was already revealed. So yeah. where do you go from there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you kind of shut it down because the, the, those, the head operators were, you know, killed. Maybe they have multiple towns doing multiple janky stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I guess need so. To go find that. They got they on us. On we a need search. some hunters to go <laughs> search and find them and stop them from doing them shenanigans. Get out, the <laughs> hunter edition. But I, I don't want to go like Fast and Furious and be like, get oh my out. gosh, can we can we please number five in get the out. Fast and Furious series? Like, yeah, this should be the last one. Please, you know, if they, if everybody don't wrap it up and yeah. get killed off this one or something like that. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I enjoyed the last one. Yeah, you know, they had some good action in it, but it's just like, okay, when is enough enough? Yeah. You no, know, listen, we need we need. They were bringing people back because we thought Han was dead. Yeah, we almost cried for Han. Now you know, I saw the trailer. I'm like, he's 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 back. Right. Okay, I guess yeah. we'll do it. You know, but you know. It's, they had an amazing cast, you know. Yeah, uh, they do. They do. Sad when Paul Walker, his incident happened. And, yeah, you know, that was I think it sad. took everybody by surprise. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anytime you lose, you know, somebody like that um, out of nowhere, it's always sad. Again, um, like with the Kobe Bryant situation, that hits harder because it's so unexpected. Yeah. You know, it's not somebody old, um, a young guy, you know, who has so much life ahead. Yeah. Um, as you think. And I, start, I mean, if you go back into Paul Walker's – like his movies, there's uh -huh. a lot of sleeper movies. Like um, the one I saw, run on, it's a run, running scared. Okay, and I think I, I may have seen you that. You got to see that. That's running. I scared. think that's his best best work. Okay, know, I got to check scared, that out. So check it out sometime. All right, cool. So um, I, my wife, I'm gonna blame it on her, but she had me watching um, a Netflix series, and Netflix is starting to dip into reality. And, you know, they, they've been known for the documentaries, which I love, and, and, you know, original shows, you know, dramas and stuff like that and comedies. But now they have dipped into the reality world, and the new show is Love is Blind. Okay. And so it's a cool concept. I don't know if you ever watch um, TLC's um, Married at First Sight. Which I'm a fan of. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and admit that, you know, what I'm saying? that's one of them guilty pleasures when people just get married um, after meeting each other for the first time at the altar. Oh, so it's like that uh, yeah. 90 Day Fiance or whatever. Not quite 90 Day Fiance. And 90 that, Day that Fiance. Shows, man, yes. That's crazy. <laughs> but 90 Day Fiance, yeah, you know, at least they like met each other and was talking on the internet or something. But this is like you've never talked to this person, and boom, you get married at the altar. Well, Love is Blind is you go into these pods and you don't see the person, but you can talk to that person every day and get to know this person without seeing them. And then the guy has to propose to that girl in order to see her. And then they have to get married like 30 days later. Have to. Yeah. I mean, well, not have to, but that's the whole objective is to find your love, your first love. I mean, not your first love, but your 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 spouse. Oh, okay, yeah. I got you. Well, 
Yeah, I can talk for as a soldier, a lot of soldiers find their first love in the strip club. Yeah. <laughs> And they become their wives and dependents later on. And, oh. hey, it's just the norm, you know. Yeah. Contract thing. And a couple years Listen, I board. know somebody who's <laughs> in the military, and I believe she's probably been married like five times. I'm like, <laughs> hey, hey. It got to be a dependency thing, right? She's worldly right now. Oh, my goodness. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Hey. Yeah, but um, so Love is Blind, I, I like it. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting concept. And I think this is the first show that Netflix is drip feeding. <laughs> so that kind of pissed me off. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, give me the whole shaboing. I don't want to wait till next week. That's regular TV. Yeah. Oh, so that's how they do it. Oh, yeah, they man. drip feeding each show this Thursday, See, next Thursday. In the, year, nope. in the age of binge watching, right. that's what we all want. We want it now. I want it now. I want to sit down on a Saturday and watch all the episodes. <laughs> <laughs> and so we kind of left on a cliffhanger. This is... It's um, the wedding day. Okay. So the wedding day is this Thursday. They're dropping that episode. So if you decide to watch it, you can watch all of them. But this Thursday, they're dropping the last episode, the wedding. Gotcha. gotcha. So, um, but it's interesting. So a couple of people, um, they had, I think, 20 guys, 20 girls, but they only left with like six couples or something. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. So listen, I'm going to have to spoil y'all on this one, but there's yeah. a, a black dude on there. Okay. All right. <laughs> And he and fell he, for this. <laughs> he, found, he found his love, right? But he forgot, he failed to uh, tell her that um, previously he was involved in um, some bisexual relationships. Okay. Yeah, so. Yeah. You got to put that one out there, you know? I mean, you put that just, out there earlier. Just for clarity and transparency. <laughs> I like that word now, transparency. Transparency. Yeah, all right. No, just say. Yep. So, and uh, the uh, the show that I was watching on Netflix is Lock and Key. Okay, I saw that. Yeah. That's Stephen King's son, right? I think is so. It? I think I read something. He didn't want no one to know, but Ooh. Stephen King's son. I'll check that out. Now that you're saying that, I can kind of see it. it. It gives you that um, uh, mystical vibe. So it's kind of for a younger age group or whatever, like my teeny boppers? Yeah, it's almost like a teeny boppers. Oh, so is it like Twilight with the shimmering? Yeah, well, not quite Twilight, but it's like a Twilight type deal. <sighs> but it was bearable. Oh, I enjoyed it. Okay, you know it was I mean? bearable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's creative. It it was predictable as a writer for me at the end, but then they try to add a little twist to it. And I was like, mm, you might be reaching. Yeah. But it still gave it a nice little twist at the end. Okay, cool. So check it. it out. Check right. out Lock and Key, The Outsider, The Hunters, and Love is Blind. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, moving on, moving on. What about hit movies? We got a couple of movies that's coming out there that we got to put on our to-go-see list. Um, and I think... Um, we talked about Spiral, right? Yes. It's well, supposed to be like the song. The trailers that's come that that's been released um, with Chris Rock Spiral. That's okay. a Saw spinoff. Yeah, Saw man. When it first came out, it was. I think it took the industry by surprise. What? And then as it started doing its, uh, what shall I call it, the Fast and the Furious. Oh my gosh! The rage for through. Yeah, it started. You can only do that with only certain things. Yeah. Like even when you think about it, Jason. Yeah, they did it Friday the 13th, the 27th chapter. Yeah, like Jason in space. Right. <laughs> X and, yeah, Jason, Jason versus reborn. Yeah, Freddy. And, oh, I'm like, oh, oh, I was God. like, okay, enough. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, just kill him, torpedo him. I don't know. Whatever. So I understand that. Yeah. What else? So, um, and did you see the um, reveal of the Batman costume? Yes, I saw that. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm on the fence. Okay. You know, I'm okay. I'm a Christian Bale fan of you know he took it yes. to the next level. Yes, yes. Like I believe every Batman should take it to the next level. Like you know, you start off with Michael Keaton. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal job. Yeah. And a lot of people hate on it, Val Kilmer, but I love Val Kilmer as an actor because mm -hmm. no one's better is going to beat his uh, western that he did, Tombstone. But yeah, I believe they bring that level up every time, and yeah. he's gonna have to come with his A game, yeah. gain some weight. 
Yeah, I think so too. Because he's a little skinny, little yeah. scrawny dude. You, know? you can't be twilighting around. Nah, man. I'm a shimmer over here. I'm a shimmer <laughs> over there. I'm Batman. He gonna at least have to put on about about thirty pounds of muscle. Yeah, you know? he's got to. He's, he's got to work out. Brother got to work out. Because I mean, Christian Bale. You speaking of Christian Bale? He's one of those guys that really throws himself into his character. Yeah, method actors. Yes. I watched that YouTube video mm-hmm. about him and how he got ready for the for all his films and just. Like for the mechanic, the machinist, the machinist. he had to lose, he lost so much weight. He just ate like an apple and some and tuna. And tuna fish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And ran like 12 miles a day or something yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And he, But it, he paid for it because it messed him up for a it little did. bit. It did. You can't lose that much weight. I tried the um, Christian Bale diet. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So I'm all hungry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean. I'd, I'd just be angry. Yeah. 24-7. Yeah. What you want? Yeah, that don't that don't work. I mean, you do lose weight quickly. Yeah. So it was about I did like five hundred calories a day, and I about died yeah. from, of starvation. And on top of that, you got to learn lines. Yeah, and then fight scenes mental, and man. everything else. Oh. Man, yeah. I come out just fall on the floor <laughs> on the stage like whatever. I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So all right, um, the Stranger Things they released their trailer teaser okay. as well. Yep. An, that's another um, Netflix show that I enjoy to watch. Um, I know it's not a movie, but you know we just talking about little teaser trailers that we've watched, and um, I'm looking forward to it. We all thought that, um, gosh, I can't think of his name. It just gave, it Hawking. What's his name? I know who you're talking about. Yeah, the main, the, the father character dude. We thought he was dead, but I knew he wasn't dead when they said all oh, this. The, the Americans in the jail, or whatever. <laughs> So they, you know, they tease that. It's interesting where they're going to go um, with that story because, you know, they spent the first two seasons on the underground world or the mm-hmm. upside-down world, and then um, the upside-down world came to reality the third season. And so now we're about to see what's going to happen. It's just going to be world, world. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. All right. Yeah, All right. So a couple of new hit movies that's coming out. My wife wanted me to take you to go see The Photographer. Okay. That's with uh, Issa Rae. Yeah, I and, saw uh, that. About the uh, the chick who doesn't want to love. Usually it's the guy who don't want to love. she commit. from Atlanta. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want to love. <laughs> I don't want your love. And that, that's how it is. In the, what's it? Atlanta is, um, what's the ratio? It's like 50 to 1. 10 to 1. one? No, something yeah. ridiculous. 10 yeah. to 1. 11 right, to 1. Yeah. Yeah. So the something guys out there. Just and half the guys out there. um you know, they want the same thing that ladies want. Yeah, they're playing with other team. Yeah. They you know? play with other team, bro. What's <sighs> love got to do? Got to do it. But yeah, she, uh, Issa Rae, it looks like it'll be something really comical that you can check out and yeah. just, you know, get a feel for it. Not comical, but it's a love. They just compare it to Love Jones. Yeah, like a Love Jones. Yeah, feel. so we, we're we overdue for a Love Jones type yeah, movie. Yeah, we need that. We need and that. Lorenzo Tate, you know, he's still, I mean, you still put that movie in right now. He's, right. Right. Booty time. <laughs> you know, so. I love so, it. We, we'll we give our reviews on that. Um, the next time we come back, we hopefully we've seen it and we can tell you how it is. Oh, don't forget, Birds of Prey. We got to check Harley Quinn. Oh, out. yeah. With Margaret Robbie. I yeah. love her as Harley Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. Yo. We got to check that out. Um, make sure I get to this week. Yeah. 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 Because that's, um, I guess it's taken off of um, uh, Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Spinoffs. Yeah, those spin-offs. Gotta love the spinoffs. Right. I think she led the cast of Suicide Squad. Yeah, yeah. they talked really good. You know, Will Smith was there, uh-huh. but they talked about how she just stole the scene. Yeah, she, she did. Was in it. But she did. You know, Harley Quinn is that character, and if you got a character like that, you know, it just yeah. makes a better film. For sure, for sure. All right, well, we're moving on. Now we're hitting up sports news. What's oh, the yeah. latest in sports news? Now, we already talked, touched we, on the fight, but... We got them dope boys in Cleveland. Oh, my, my, my. <laughs> they pushing it, trying to get 156 pounds through the border. <sighs> Don't they know Donald Trump talking about them border walls? Oh, my God. <laughs> 157 pounds of weed, bro. That's yeah, a lot of weed. That's, I mean, and the dog sat. Like, the dog, like, smoke it up. That dog, like, ran on me. <laughs> You rest up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, I mean, 
It's just it's just crazy about how what he was thinking, Robinson, Gregory Robinson was thinking right there, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now they're facing like twenty years. That's you know? crazy. Now Three. here's the thing about it, right? Twenty years. Now I know the fact that you try to smuggle one hundred and fifty seven. You know that's bad, but it's weed, bro. <laughs> like, it's legal almost everywhere. Yes, <laughs> like, but he had to get that good. Yeah, he that Mexican on. stuff. Yeah. Listen, you need to have somebody else as your fall guy. I, listen, I'm not. Did. There was a third guy in the car, uh, and they were like, um, "You take the rap." He's like, mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> "I ain't doing that." That's why I read the story. They're like, "There was a third oh. guy." And they tried. It. They actually released them. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So oh he's like, man. I can't do that to I, bro. Mm. Mm, mm, <laughs> so, you know, it's just crazy, you know. You know, you're, you're a professional player, football player. You're making that, you know. Like, some people just can't get out of their system. Like, you know, you watch all these people that used to have past and stuff like that. I don't even know if he, he grew up like that. But most people that grow up like that yeah. don't want to go back to that. You know? Yeah, man. They know, they know the risk. You can't do a twin twin. No. Like prison is real. Yes. Prison is. I've been watching. Uh, what's that? PG. Some. Uh, it's this thing on YouTube, and it just talks about guys that are in jail and how you need to operate. Mm -hmm. And yo, that's all I need to watch. It's like watching Oz all over again. Oh. Remember how Oz used to be scared? Was crazy, bro. <laughs> like I'm like at the BC. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna love you tonight, bro. right? <laughs> Tonight, I'm like, I'm not going to prison. <laughs> nah, bro. Yeah, man. So, nah. Yeah. So that that's was the, that was a crazy move. Man. Yeah, that's wild, man. I don't understand. You know, it's it's you got a football career. You making thousands and if millions. millions of dollars, you know, and you going to resort back to weed? 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 Come on, man. That's so unnecessary, bro. Like you've been given. Once in a lifetime opportunity to play on the highest level of football, a sports, a sports. Yeah. Well, soccer is world, you know, but in the United States, football is king. Yeah. And you going to go for some weed. I, I wouldn't have been in the car. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't get it. You I don't know, get it I, either. Just coming across the board like, <laughs> they ain't going to smell that. Oh. You know how that stanky Yankee smell. Oh, sometimes. man, you know, you know that jump. I mean, he must have been high on it. That's why he thought he could get over <laughs> Just made the wrong turn, but yeah. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, sports, what else? Yeah, what about the um, the new um, the XSFL? XFL. What do you think about it? Have you had a chance to watch it? I've been keeping up with the Defenders. I guess they're 2-0 and o right now. Right. So, shout out to Defenders for D.C. You know. Yes, D.C. team. I'm a D.C. We finally got a winning team. squad right nah, now. Go ahead, man. <laughs> Leave my skins out of this, okay? <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. Yes, yes. But, but that's a great thing. Um, uh, Vince I McMahon. read something. Someone said the number one team from the XFL needs to play the last team in the NFL. And if whoever wins gets to stay on the pro. Oh wow! NFL. Oh wow! <laughs> that would be. I bet you they play a lot harder. Oh yeah, they would. That paycheck get cut in half. <laughs> yeah, but I also heard a lot of commentators that said that um, that the best uh, XFL team is not even in comparison to the um, the top college team. Really? Yeah, yeah. They were saying like some of them guys aren't even on that college level. So, I mean, it would be interesting to see that them play a college team. You know what I'm saying? Like so. a, Alabama or somebody, you know, like, <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, it, it, it was, it was entertaining. I love the insight. They're interviewing the players when they get off the field, after they miss a field goal. It was a lot of um, things in it that um, made it interesting, you know what I'm saying? The next level. Yeah. And I heard that the um, atmosphere in the, um, in the stadiums are, are it's incredible because it's a little bit more intimate because the stadiums are smaller. It's not like you know those giant NFL uh, stadiums. Wow. Yeah, and the tickets are cheap. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't pass up cheap tickets. Right. Right. And beer. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they said. A lot of people they have their they drunk and so they cheering on. Yeah. Um, they say there was some minor tailgating, but nothing to the point where it's like, oh, I'm sure as as the um, season goes and, and, and it becomes more popular, people will start tailgating. Yeah. If you ever get a chance to tailgate in Hawaii, 
at Hawaii. That is where, yes, I lived in Hawaii for a little bit, and that is where you want those local boys from Hawaii, mm-hmm. from Oahu. Yo, they'll bring out the trailer grill. Oh wow! And you will have pulled pork forever. Mm. And they and they man, they're so loving, man. They're like, hey, brother, what you eating? I'm like, I didn't bring no food. Well, come on, have some of this. Oh wow! Man, you, when you finish eating their food, your cholesterol, oh, your blood man. pressure, everything just high, all the salt and all that, everything <laughs> else. It's, you just got to probo when you stab it over there. You know, it's a great thing. Did they have Spam? Oh, yeah. Spam, okay. was, spam was actually at McDonald's in the morning. You could what? get eggs, rice, and Spam oh, they had on rice. a plate. Oh, yeah, wow. Rice is like, they're like, you know, I'm from Charleston, so uh-huh. we, if we ain't got rice with every meal down there, uh-huh. ain't a meal. So oh, wow. Rice went with every meal down there, man. Wow, that's so it's, it's a different world. Yeah, I know. I watched um, bizarre foods, and I know that was like one of the things that they were eat, eating spam, whatever uh, spam sushi. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. it's crazy. They love spam in Hawaii, but hey, Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, go. I gotta go. That's the one place I haven't been. Oh man, we got we gotta take you in, man. I, I, it's a lot of places. If it starts with a W, it might be kind of rough. Uh oh, the city. Why not? Uh, you, Waikiki. You got to be ready. Oh, Waikiki is like, it can get kind of buck in Waikiki. You, mm-hmm. know, you mess around, you slip and go down the wrong alleyway. Uh-huh. Ain't like what uh, Bar Barker did you in The Price is Right. Uh-oh. Like, I just got knocked <laughs> on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Don't slip. Don't oh, slip. Man, oh, man. So, sports-wise, also, the Olympics. They okay. said, you know, it's due to happen in Japan, right? And mm-hmm. I think they might have. Because of the outbreak of Corona. Uh oh, the Corona. So they're saying that, you know, it's up in the air right now. They may or may not move it, or, you know, because it might be like too many people getting sick across there. Yeah, man, that Corona ain't no joke. I don't know. My One of my sons said that there was a report that it's harder for black folks to get it because our skin, uh, melanin in our skin. Really? Yeah, like far as like touching elements. I'm sure if you, you know, have direct contact. But because, you know what? It's hard to believe. Anything on the internet. I'm, I am skeptical about everything on the internet. Yes. There was a, a video that people were sitting around of some lady getting in the elevator, sneezing all on the um, on the uh, the numbers and stuff for the elevator, and the other people getting in touch, and it was like she was just diagnosed with the coronavirus and gets on the elevator. I'm like, that was probably some video of some lady being gross. Yeah. Yeah, you have to research everything. Like, you got to see when someone puts something up, you got to see what source – it comes from, go to right. that source, look right. at that source, see if it's a reputable source. Right, see, right. Then the person that you put it, that put it on there, they're reputable too. So it's a lot behind it, man. It's a lot behind it. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I'm tired of people putting up, I saw somebody put up uh, that Della Reese had died, like, the other day. I'm like, she died like five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, you, you just putting it up they here? Just, they just found out, like, Della Reese. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Prince I mean, died. Prince died like four years ago, three years ago. How many years ago was it? I mean, where were you at? Like, uh, right. I'm like, right. come on. Please look at the date, people. Look at the date. Before you post anything, look at the article date. True. It, it's on there. It's, real, it's true. simple. True. 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 But a lot of people just see, oh, my, oh, my. Let me be the next, the first. This is hot. This is hot. Yeah, yeah. Like TMZ, you know, first to one. Get everybody yeah, everybody want to be the first to put stuff out. That's first good. to put stuff out. All right, what you got in, in in weird news, man? Weird news. Okay, I kind of freaked out when I heard this, but uh-huh. some brother uh-huh. decided to kidnap a woman. We don't have the race. Okay. But I guess she was racially insensitive, uh-huh. so he decided to educate her. He sat her down and let her watch nine hours of Roots. <laughs> Can you imagine how... Angry, she probably was, or <sighs> did she even learn anything after right. watching nine hours of Roots? I mean, Roots was good when we were growing up. Oh yeah, remember? yeah. When that came on, it was much watch. Yeah, much watching. Everybody's on their p's and q's for at least that whole month. Yes, and everything else, and no one's talking trash. Like, how are you today? Right, I'm right. Fine. I'm fine. Yeah. How are you? So, I could imagine. But now we have variety. He could have mixed it up. He could right. put Rosewood in there, a little Malcolm now. X, 12 years of slave. Really <laughs> stir that pot for her. Right? You know, like, let me give you variety, oh. you know. But, hey, so I guess he, you know, he, he probably got his point across. Right, because after the first four hours of Roots, you're like, uh, I remember in middle school, uh, my history teacher, Mr. O'Leary, 
Um, he was already 100 years old at the time, but, you know, that's when you He was in Roots. <laughs> yeah, he was. Like, you see me right there? <laughs> he was a part of it, right? right you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, you know, that was back in the day when you, the teachers had to rent out the carts with the TV yeah, on Yeah, and push the carts in yeah, there. Yeah, push the carts in there. And uh, I was psyched to go out there. I'm going to go get the cart this, this week. And uh, we watched it, like, every day. Every day, just watching it. And, and um, it was good. Like, the, the trip... When I say good, it was um, educational good. Um, the trip from Africa up until um, when Kizzy was born, and as Kizzy got older, I kind of drifted off. Yeah. After that, I was so uh, <laughs> class. I was like, oh, I'm going to Mr. Larry class to go to sleep. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, but, I mean, eventually I watched the whole thing, but it was just like, wow, you know. And then they made the remake not too long ago. Yeah, they did. Ago. I never watched that, though. It was, I was, it like, was I, pretty I entertaining. I 100, 100 hours watching the first one. Yeah. Um, I should make my kids do that. Yeah. It's Black History Month. Yeah, I mean, just binge out. Yeah, we got a couple. We, Final, we, we binge now, right? Yeah, on Netflix. just binge out. Just have a little, put them all in your little queue, your little cart. Yeah. It's like, here, here's your assignment for this month. <laughs> right. Watch all this. You have the military kids walking around. <laughs> Fight the power! <laughs> oh, man, my but, name my name is Kunta. Don't call me Toby. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah. but you gotta love it. You know, both shout out the Black History Month. We every day should be Black History Absolutely. Month because you know we, as Black people, I I think some of the kids don't know how much we really gave to society yeah, and yes. America and everything like that. Yes. And that's why when people get upset and say, "Oh my God, not another uh, slavery movie!" All right, I don't want my kids to forget that. No, don't think that it could ever not happen again. What? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just stay woke, you know, so don't forget. You know, learn your ancestors. Go to Charleston. Go to Savannah. Yeah. See what things happen and, you know, take some lessons. You know, learn. It's often said that if um, we don't remember or learn from our past, our history, then we're destined to repeat it. Yes. Yes. You know what I mean? And you see a lot of things going back right yep. now. Yeah. A, a lot of laws rolling back. Yep. So we have to educate ourselves, educate our children um, throughout the year, not just Black History Month. We should highlight yes. on Black History Month. I'm thankful for that, but just throughout the year. I mean, just even with what black people made, like refrigeration systems. Yeah. Uh, stop lights. Stop lights, GPS, um, things we took for granted. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, a black person made that? Yeah, man. And, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, all that we contribute to society. Like, America was built on the backs of black people, man. Correct. I mean, without a shot of a doubt. 100. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I, I ain't trying to be all fight the power, black man, whatever, but that's just the absolute truth. Yeah. I am proud of my culture. I'm proud of my heritage. But at the same time, um, you know, I embrace everybody and everybody's culture, yeah. right? Um, I, I have white folks in my family and then some of my closest friends are, um, are white and I always tell them, you know, the thing about, I love about them is they don't try to ignore what's going on. They are very conscious. They'll, they'll ask questions. They'll, um, you know, um, my little, I call her my little sister, uh, Nelly. Uh, the other day we were together, um, on the, we went away on a, on a trip. They live in Texas. They flew out mm -hmm. here. And um, she was talking about how she hadn't heard anything from her son's school, who was like in, I think he's in kindergarten or first grade, mm -hmm. about black history. And she went up to the school and was like, why aren't you guys teaching about black history? Oh. And I said, sis, I'm so proud of you. You know what I mean? It was that like, moment, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, because she understood. And she's like, it's important to her because her kids are my nephews. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we're not blood, but that's that's yeah. my you know that's that's my nephews, and so um, she wants them to understand. And, and that's what it is: the ignorance. Like people that are prejudiced, they're ignorant. They yep. think that yep, hey, our people did it all, and everybody else is beyond beneath us. And you know, it's just that crazy, that stupidity just keep perpetuates over the years. You know? Absolutely, and it's something learned. But I understand that, man. Yeah, it's about embracing the culture. Yeah. Hey, we crushing the culture. Embrace, embrace the culture, the culture. folk. <laughs> you got to embrace it. You got to understand. You got to be willing to um, hear 
and listen to somebody that's different from you. Yeah, a lot of people get trapped in their own bubble and yeah. like, yeah. this is how I grew up, so this is how you should get to know. No, no, nah, no. no. Uh, I tell everybody like, I was either one traffic stop uh-huh. from not having the life I have now. Yep. I could have been that guy that got killed yep. or could have been that guy that, you know what, that cop was having a bad day Shh. and he could have been like, okay, whatever. You know, I got a smart mouth anyway. Yeah, so yeah. it's just not that I'm disrespectful, but you ain't going to treat me any way, you know? Yeah. And that's what you try to tell people. Act right. You know, just treat me like how you want to be treated. And it goes better that way. You know, I had, um, it was during um, one of the, the many uh, shooting cop killings or whatever, and it was kind of getting hot um, at the time, maybe two, three years ago. And I remember I posted something on Facebook about, man, um, it's this is a scary time for m- me and my boys. And some of the, some of people of uh, different persuasions was didn't understand. Why? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just didn't understand. Like, listen, I can be doing everything right, and my life is still. Philanthro Castile. Yes. I That's have, what it was. It yeah. was during that time. Yeah. And I was like. Bruh had, he had everything he was supposed to, and he still got killed because he the was fear. a black man. It's fear. It's yeah, fear. The fear that's been pe- petri- perpetuated over the yeah, years. Gosh. You know, <laughs> and the training, you know, people say it's training, but not, I try to tell people, but not everybody should be a cop. Nope. Just because you want to be nope. doesn't mean you have what it takes. It's like you can't be scared. You know, you can't look at everyone as us versus them. Yeah. You here to preserve and protect. So you should be wanting to protect people and be like, Hey, let, how can I help you? I'm a servant of, you know, the city, the state or whatever. Yeah. And that's the way it should be looked at. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Can't be scared. Can't be scared, man. Again, shout out. I know a lot of great cops, you know, especially yeah. in our area uh, down here in uh, Waldorf and, um, you know, family members as cops. Um, I got one for you. My uncle was one of the first five, I believe, first five um, cops in Charleston County. Wow. Like, back in 1950 to 1969, mm-hmm. a black cop couldn't arrest a white person. Wow. And they couldn't drive the patrol cars. They used to have to get dropped off and have walking oh, patrols. You got to be kidding. Yo, was, he used to sit down and tell me these stories, and I'm like, are you for real? And he's like, look, it was hard. We had to fight racism inside, oh, racism wow. outside, and it, it was just hard. He has a book coming out. He's going to tell a lot about it. Oh, wow. It. I got I to gotta get a hold of that book. Yeah. You know what? It's um, it's hard because this has been engulfed in our culture for so many years. It's not just going to change overnight. No. You know what I mean? This is something that ha- that's... You know, you, you got to work hard to get it out. You know, it's like yeah. a stain. Like a, some people want to keep that status quo. Yeah. And it's been there for so years and they hate change. And they're like, oh, if you change, everything will go down. No, yeah. maybe it'll work out. Man, oh, man. <laughs> so that's weird man. news, right? Yeah, some weird news, some weird news out there. Well, we about to wrap up the show. Um, you know, I guess the last thing that we can touch on is the rapper Pop Smoke was oh. killed. Rest in peace. Yeah, man. I didn't really know much about the dude, on, you know, besides that one song, Welcome to the Party. But yeah, um, from my understanding, he had posted something on social media mm-hmm. and it tagged where he was. Yeah. And then the dudes went out there to rob him and killed him. Yeah. You got to be wary of that stuff now, man. I mean, he, he this young brother left the East Coast because he's from New York. Yeah. You know, yeah. I saw stuff with 50 was talking about it. And wow. he just did that. Uh, I think Nikki just did the remix with him, but it's starring Welcome to the Party. Mm-hmm. And he was, from what I was looking at, he's well loved, and everybody saw him as the next come up. Uh-huh. You know, a lot of people say he was like 50 in his rhyme style, mm-hmm. but to me, he reminded me of Shine. Like yeah. we talked about it, he had that slow drag yeah. and yeah. how Shine used to flow like that. Yeah. But, you know, it was crazy. He went out to the West to, you know, live his best <sighs> life and cut short 20. 20, man. I can't even 20, remember doing Probably didn't come to legal drinking age. Yeah. It's like life just cut short, man. And it's one thing I would say to any of the young up-and-coming artists and stuff that's lit that may come across this or, or anybody inspired to do that. If, if and when you make it, 
you ain't got to flash all your riches, man. No, no. Because people going to be already envious of what you have. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I saw um, Safari, um, Nicki Minaj, uh, X Boo mm-hmm. on uh, Instagram. Mr. Had, Fur Jacket. Yeah, Mr. <laughs> Fur Jacket. He had posted um, on there, like, he said, hey, I remember going through that stage of holding money up to my ear and stuff. And he was he had put that same message out there about, look, guys, you know, I know when you're not used to having it, you know, it seems so desirable to be flashy and stuff. Always remember that somebody else going to want to get what you got. Yeah. And not everybody um, going to go about it the right way. Yeah. They're going to try to take it from you. Yeah. That's sad. But man. this ain't new, man. This, uh, yep. And these cats should know this because they come from hoods and they know there's that cat out there that don't care. And he's trying to get it. Like, yep. I could go all the way back and I could take it back to Charleston. Um, some entertainers got their chains stole in Charleston and they were trying to get it back and yeah. they had to go through the right protocols because when you come to somebody else town uh-huh. you do have to get Permission. clearance yeah <laughs> clearance so when you go there you gotta have your network there like, hey boo 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 y'all I'm coming through yeah. you know I mean people like I'm a grown man I don't no no nah. you have to sometimes clear, clarify who, where you going and who yeah. you with you know that's just part of the game yeah. and if you don't do that don't be out no. You know, don't go out and say, hey, I'm going to do what I do. No. Now, there's some real cast that's hungry, yeah. and they don't care who you are. That was like growing up in the city. Um, if you did not live in Berry Farms um, or knew somebody who lived in Berry Farms, you ain't walking Berry Farms. No. You know what I mean? No. And so, um, yeah. So, anytime you go anywhere, you better have some type of connection people know, especially yeah. you trying to be flashy about it you know because somebody's mm-hmm. always out to trying to take you down yeah all right cool well this has been a great first episode of crushing the culture with e and t yeah and um i think we are done with this episode so um stay tuned check us out again um for our next cast we're going to be hitting on some more things some more hit shows and giving you our views whatever's hot uh, remember, we're going to be checking out the photographer, Birds of Prey, give you our reviews on that and whatever else comes out after that. Word. All right. So thank you for listening. Um, again, tune in next time. Peace out.